What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another C++ and SDL tutorial. Hope you've been enjoying the series so far. In the last tutorial, what we did is we, uh, well, we had a nice little program that did not do much at all, but at least we had a different color background. We were looking at uh, SDL surfaces, SDL rectangles, SDL recs. Um, we were taking a look at the uint, or the unsigned int, 32 byte, 32 bits, uh, data type and uh, had some new functions with SDL map RGB, SDL fill rect, and uh, SDL update window surface. SDL update window surface is crucial and uh, it's it's kind of important especially for uh, updating the screen um, while things are happening during the game. In this tutorial though, um, I, I don't know, you, you probably can't hear it on my screen on my end and, and with my computer. You may very well be able to hear it on your computer, though. Maybe your processor is starting to kind of kick it into high gear. Maybe your fan is turning on because you've got a program running very, very fast right now. The thing is, when we create this SDL program, and typically when we have the, this, this main event loop, it's going to run as fast as possible, as fast as your computer can do it. And that's going to make a little bit of a mess, and that's why your processor and stuff is going to jump into, uh, I don't know, I can't even explain. <laughs> and uh, your, your, fan, your fan is going to kick on, There's, it's, it's going to be crazy. The point that I'm trying to get at is that we need to cap the frame rate. We kind of need to limit how fast our game is running. And uh, typically you see frames, uh, frames per second, or FPSs, uh, not first-person shooters, but uh, an FPS or frames per second, and kind of a limit as to how fast the game can really run. Typically, we see uh, 60 being a good frames per second, and so that's what we're going to use. In this tutorial, though, we're going to use some preprocessor definitions. You guys know that I'm using the uh, pound symbol include to include the SDL library and the standard template library's IOStream library as part of the uh, standard namespace. Uh, rather than include in the preprocessor definitions, in this case we're going to define. Um, you'll notice my keyword, the keyword define kind of changed there because that is uh, an action and, and something you can really do with C++. If you have not heard of uh, preprocessor definitions before, uh, that's not what I want to teach you in this tutorial. We're just going to use it and take advantage of it. Um, like I said, we're going to be using uh, frames per second, um, uh, a variable here. I'm just going to call mine FPS. And I use this uh, so I can keep it as kind of a constant because it's not really going to change. In fact, you know what else isn't going to change? Our window width and our window height, at least initially. At least what we will pass into this create window function. So we can go ahead and define a few other things. I'm actually not going to call it uh, just plain width. I'm just going to call mine define window width. Sorry, window width. And uh, I know we used 400, and we also defined the window height, which we have to be 200. Window width. And we kind of use it just like any other variable, anything that we kind of defined. Although, since it is, I don't, I don't know if macro is the right word for it, but a, a definition that we have. Oh, I'm also working in the, my changing the color program. I'm going to change, uh, I'm going to save this as something else. 05 underscore, 05A underscore FPS, or in this case, setting a frame rate. Setting a... You can see I have some old code and some things that I will be getting into later on in the series. We have this uh, setting a frame rate right here. I'm going to save a different copy of it. And uh, I'll go back and edit the other the other one beforehand, uh, or at least after the tutorial. Alright, enough talking to myself. Let's get into what we have to do next. Once we've defined this variable, or this kind of this constant for us, this FPS, what we want to do is hop back down to our code over here. Um... Let's see, I don't want to change the background color or anything just yet. Actually, I'm going to set this back to white. And I guess I, I suppose I will keep it. 255, 255. But I'll just kind of run this all together. Underneath all that, we want a new variable. And I'm going to kind of cluster it with the SDL event and a bool running equals true because it, it is something that is necessary and mandatory if we want to set up this um, frames per second or FPS cap. So this is an unsigned integer, 32-bit data type, so UN32. And the variable that I'm going to call, at least what I'm going to call my variable, is starting tick. 
<laughs> and uh, I don't mean tick as in the insect or the bug, I mean tick as in like a clock. A clock would tick, and that sort of thing. While, uh, while we're running inside our, our, our event loop, we want to reset this variable, starting tick, to equal... Remember, we're just declaring it up here, we're actually going to define it down here. And this is going to happen every frame, because we're looking at it in the uh, main loop. What this is going to equal is a new function. So let's hop on over to our documentation. Let's look for SDL get ticks. New function here. SDL get ticks. Use this function to get the number of milliseconds since the SDL library initialized. And remember, we have our initialization right up at the top here. That happens right at the beginning. And this starting tick is going to be refreshed every single frame. So this is going to keep adding and adding and adding and on to it. So this doesn't take any any parameters or anything here. All it does is it returns uh, the value of milliseconds since we initialize SDL. So, yeah. This value wraps if the program runs for approximately more than 49 days. Holy crap. That's crazy. Can you imagine running a program for 49 days? <laughs> All right, let's run this function, SDL get ticks. And now I'm going to show you how we can kind of limit the frame rate. Um, we do this by kind of a, a little math trick, and that has to do with the milliseconds and stuff that we do. Uh, I'm not going to explain how all this works. I am going to explain what you should write and what you need to be actually programming and, and the code that you need to be writing. So at the bottom of our while uh, running, at the bottom of our main loop, Let's set up an if statement, an if conditional statement, and let's have a small other parentheses section here that says 1,000, which is the amount of milliseconds in a second, obviously, divided by FPS, or frames per second, if that is greater than SDL get ticks at the moment, subtract starting tick, which would represent the time that this frame is actually running in, because starting tick as in everything that we've seen so far, as in the moment that we're getting right now. If there is more, what we're going to do, we're going to have a code block here after that condition. What we want to do is we want to run the delay function that we've been looking at way, way back at the beginning of this tutorial series. SDL delay. Make SDL wait for a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that same 1,000 milliseconds divided by FPS minus, and open up a new set of parentheses here, SDL underscore get ticks minus that starting tick. The same thing that we have right up here. And use the, uh, a semicolon to end the line. Cool. That's really all it takes. <laughs> Now, um, you won't obviously see a change in the program. Let's, uh, G++, I'm going to change this to 05A, setting a frame rate. No, I do have an error. Oh, because I just changed uh, the v color background variable name. Now that runs just fine, at least it compiles. Let's run the code. We have our white background, and... Things are pretty quiet. Um, my fan isn't acting up. I don't. I don't hear my CPU spinning or anything going crazy. Uh, we got a window running just fine, and the frames per second is limited. We've got a cap on the FPS, so now it runs at a at a, at a good speed. That's not too crazy. There we go. Very, very easy, very, very simple. All it takes is this conditional statement and keeping track of the starting tick or how long it has been since SDL was initialized. Now, um, obviously you might not want to have to rewrite this over and over and over again um, if you have any other programs. Um, also, it just kind of looks bad, <laughs> honestly, having this, this weird thing, this weird block at the very bottom of our uh, main event loop. So what I'm going to do is create a function. And what I'm going to do is have the function called cap frame rate, and that'll take starting tick as an argument. Now let's go up to the top of the program and actually define that function. Let's say void, because this isn't going to do anything. Cap frame rate is the name of the function that we decided on. This is going to take a uint32. And I'm going to name the variable the exact same as it was before, just so it kind of easily 
the code easily fits in without me having to, having to have to change anything. And I'm going to fix the white space over here so it looks okay. And now we're all right. That This function should work just fine for us. I'll code fold that, and we can just cap frame rate right down at the bottom of our event loop. I recommend you do the same. Now if I hop over here compile this, no errors, run the program, and, well, <laughs> there's no change, or at least no evident change, but I know that the, the game in the program is running at a, at a much better pace right now. So, that's all it took. Uh, <laughs> kind of implementing a frame rate. It's not as easy as Pygame, just a little clock, clock dot tick with the FPS. This is a little bit of a different process, but hey, this is okay once we throw it in a function. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, uh, I, I'm not really going to go over this or discuss this much again. We're just going to use this function. If you want to know more of to how this works, I guess you could find, look for it online. But this is the technique to uh, limit the frame rate uh, just by testing the amount of seconds that it's been, or milliseconds, since SDL was initialized. I'm going to stop talking, and uh, I'm going to thank you guys again for watching. Please comment, please like, please subscribe if you're willing, and hey, I'll see you in the next tutorial.